What's going on everyone? Uh, today I've got a 2018 Mustang GT in. Uh, came in with some issues. Uh, this one's got the 10-speed transmission. And uh, I know the last video I posted where I asked if anybody liked to see these. Uh, I had quite a bit of feedback and a lot of people did want me to just kind of show the process of uh, through tuning, uh, at least some of it. And uh, this one here came in. It's got quite a few issues going on. Uh, the last outing at the track, I think it trapped like 96 or 97 mile per hour, which is pretty slow for a car like this. Well, this one's actually got the Whipple on it. Uh, and there's a lot of little drivability issues I'm feeling. Uh, he wasn't sure, the owner wasn't sure if it was something mechanical going on. So uh, he brought it to me, dropped it by, and uh, I figured I'd get a data log on it and uh, see what I find. So first of all, let's take a look at the car. Of course, like I said earlier, you can see it's got the uh, it's got the Whipple supercharger on it, and uh, has a return fuel system right there, and uh, ID 1050X injectors. Nothing, just real big, you know. It's kind of just a bolt-in kit. Good looking car. Uh, I'm not sure what wheels are on it, but I know it's got uh, probably radios on the back, maybe bias plies. Not even sure now. <clears throat> but So I'm going to start it up, take it for a drive, and uh, we'll see what we find. Well, I just got in the car. Uh, I got to start it up. Got my data logger running. So uh, I'll see what I find. nothing changes as far as power wise then all of a sudden it just like takes off it's either just gonna take off or not Let's try it again issues and they want a new tune to fix their mechanical issue you know uh, so just because your car has a problem don't just run to your tuner and say it's his fault at least let him diagnose it and check it to make sure and this thing is really annoying to drive and this here uh, this car originally was uh, tuned by Lund and uh, as far as I know it had no issues and after that, he decided to go with a smaller pulley and go to E85. And after that, he had a semi-local tuner to him tune it. And ever since then, you know, it's just had issue after issue. I think he's had 16 or 17 revisions, and uh, they still can't get it right. So he uh, ended up getting a hold of me, and uh, we decided we'll see if we can get it worked out. So here's the first wide open throttle. So I'm here, I'm here and I just started kind of looking over the log and uh, I noticed that what he's really talking about where it lets out. If you notice here where it wide open throttle, you can see that green graph right there where it says solid. And if you see the white line below it, that is your timing. Now these things do drop some timing between their shifts. But one of the issues that I've seen is here where we took off, 
we go over come to here we're at uh 4400 rpms still revving up as you can tell there is no shift happening yet still revving up going towards the shift and all of a sudden the spark fell down to four degrees at wide open throttle so it has absolutely no power between that range and then up top as rpms keep going up it uh slowly started bringing spark back but that was a big dead spot from 5,000 rpms to 7,000 and it was just it felt slower than stock so we're going to go back and see exactly what was happening here one of the first things i normally like to check is your spark sources uh and actually another issue i see right off the right off hand is your variable cam timing your schedule mode it's supposed to go into what's called optimum power they have got a specific cam angles for wide open throttle that uh you know are designed for wide open throttle you can adjust those but in this case it actually stayed in the best fuel economy mode it did not change a lot of times that happens when there's big torque issues so i'm going to go back and check on that and uh, see if there's any large ipc swings or something like that because that often happens uh, when something like that happens it's got a torque control on spark uh that's one of the things. Normally it should be a borderline. should run off your borderline tables. You can see the spark source right there. Run off a of torque control. So there's that. And I'll go down and see if there's any IPC issues. There it is. We'll go back through that log and check it out. some point i might see 10 21,000. uh there's still some stuff off in the tune uh, i've seen another point where it went up to almost 90,000. so i'm gonna grab another log and look through that as well i did turn advance track and everything off just uh to make sure there's no spark cuts going from there and it was actually off on the previous log as well but uh that would make timing drop like that based on wheel spin but that was not the case uh here See, that pedal is just annoying like i said i keep pushing in you can actually watch here as i'm pushing my pedal in nothing happening nothing happening nothing happening and then it goes felt like a naturally aspirated car so let's take a look at the log and see what happened it still did the same thing like i said there's just a lot of stuff off in the tune like you can even see the fuel source isn't going to uh to the uh the wide open throttle mode and uh just a lot of little stuff off it's hard to tell what all it's causing it until i read the tune out but uh Usually the best thing to do in a case like this, you know, with so many issues going on, and uh, any tuner would do the same anyway. This is how we do every time. Uh, I'm just going to put the end gauge right there. I'll get the stock tune, put it back to stock, and uh, completely start over and uh, get out, see if I can get all these issues worked out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go flash the complete stock file back in and uh, start over from there. Load stock. Usually you want to load the one with the VIN number.
Should go through. There you went. I've got my base team loaded in and everything. It, uh, it's about, it's been about three or four hours since uh, I put it back to stock. I had a couple issues I had to work out myself. Uh, since I'm, uh, haven't tuned any Whip 2018s before, so uh, it took me a second to get everything right. But it's got E85 in it right now, and I'm on my way to town with it to put some 93 in it. I like to tune it on 93 first, and uh, after that, I'll tune on E85. It's a little easier to get some of your, uh, Table is correct me to tune off a 93 to start with. So it'll be 93, then the 85, and uh, he can switch back and forth between the two on this end gauge. And I've also been working on this shifting. Uh, some people, you know, like I said, everybody's got a different opinion on shifting, what they like, but what I normally do, or what I'm going to do on this car, is uh, I allow what's called skip shifting. For instance, if you take off at a, at a stop by just, you know, let's say you're 5 10 percent pedal, just a normal takeoff. And instead of shifting one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and so on, so many shifts, I actually uh, allow skip shifting, and that would allow it to go from like first to third and skip second, or from second jump to fourth, or from third to fifth, it can skip shift and doesn't have to use those clutches. Uh, some people would probably just rather have it yeah, use first, second, third, fourth, fifth on every shift. But uh, to me, it seems a little more practical just allowing a skip shift with the 10 speed. And anything over about 30% throttle, I set up to where it has to uh, use every gear and it cannot skip shift after that. So I'm uh, just about to the gas station. I'm gonna fill it up with a uh, 93 and uh, see what it does. I've got the 93 put in it. It just had a couple miles to empty. So uh, I've had it running for uh, about five, 10 minutes and we'll see what the ethanol is. It looks like it's at 11%. Uh, it's back on 93. So got the new tune loaded in there as well. And I didn't put a lot of gas in it. I got it up to almost half a tank because I will be switching back to E85. Well, I'm on my way back from, uh, from the gas station now, and uh, it has started raining, so I won't be able to do any more testing with it today. I did a little bit of testing on the new tune earlier, and uh, everything seemed to work. The fuel enrichment worked like it's supposed to. It went into the power demand enriched. The cams went to the optimum power, which is their wide open throttle mode. And uh, the whole car just, I mean, it drives like a whole new car. Like I said, there's no surging. Power can hit it out smooth. Uh, to me, it just feels like a whole new car. It's a lot more fun to drive. And uh, this weekend, sometime, I will be getting this thing on the dyno. Like I said, it's on 93 right now. And uh, I'll be switching back to 85, putting on the dyno. But that will be in a different video. Uh, this year, we'll finish this one here up. And uh, we'll see what it does with the dyno and at the track. Either this weekend, we'll probably just get to the dyno this weekend, and uh, the next weekend after this one, we're planning on testing it out at the track and see what it runs. So, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.